Some myths around eye care are actually true, and of course, others are not. Let's take the time to set the record straight. Beginning with one of the most important questions about eye health facing us all at the moment, can too much screen time be a problem? And how do we wean ourselves, and more importantly, our kids in the post-pandemic world off of screen? Do you really need an eye exam if you have 20-20 vision? And how long can you actually wear contact lenses? And what about myths around eye care? Does sitting too close to the TV hurt your eyes and do carrots help your eyesight? Does the sunshine cause cataract? I'm gonna answer all the top 10 questions you have about eye care now. Welcome back to Eye School with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. Make sure to give a little love tap on that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest eye tips and tricks I have for you. Let's get right into the questions. Question number one, is all that pandemic screen time hurting your kids' eyes? Can too much screen time be a problem? And the answer to that is actually yes, and we need to work together to get kids off of screens. And here is why. During the pandemic, families struggled to balance childcare, housework, and professional responsibilities. Children spent the school day in front of tablet and computer screens and then logged additional hours connecting with family and friends online. But here's why it matters. Some studies have suggested that certain types of digital content, such as social media, can have addictive qualities and that consuming too much can be harmful to children, particularly adolescents. All that extra screen time can also lead to headaches, blurred vision, dry eyes, yes, even in young kids, and eye strain. Focusing on video display terminals results in less blinks overall, a longer blinking interval, and that makes your tears evaporate and increases the risk of developing dry eye. It has even been said that brains actually change when you're spending time online. There's an addictive quality to gaming and to being on social media, so it becomes very difficult to wean off, and it, it is a real crisis right now. More specifically, eye issues linked to increased screen time include unstable binocular vision, so using both eyes adequately at the same time for depth perception and one visual image, uncorrected refractive error, dry eyes, and eye strain. Data also indicates that it's troublingly common for kids to use multiple digital devices at once. For example, scrolling through social media on a smartphone while simultaneously watching Netflix or YouTube on another device. And results reveal that this type of device switching has a link to a 22% increase in eye strain due to all the constant necessary ocular adjustments. So I would recommend to just be smart. Screen time itself is not inherently harmful. It's about the quality and context of the content kids are consuming. Here's some tips and recommendations and strategies that child psychologists recommend for parents trying to reduce their kids' screen time. You can also use a timer. Once you set expectations about screen time limits, you can set a kitchen timer or the timer app on your phone. I use mine on my iPhone to cut off at a certain point to stick to the agreed upon time frame. If you are consistent, that's another piece of advice, is just definitely be consistent and kids respond to that. Also give incentives, reward kids when they cooperate with the new rules. We can even use additional screen time as a reinforcer for getting other things done, like doing chores without complaining or shutting down a device when asked without a fight. You also wanna make sure you're age appropriate. So school age kids often rely on laptops and tablets for schoolwork, so try not to make that time count against screen time limits. Limits. You can consider household rules of turning off screens an hour before bed and not taking devices into bedrooms overnight. Make sure to follow the 2020-20 rule yourself and encourage your kids to as well to alleviate computer-related eye strain. Every 20 minutes, focus on something in the distance 20 feet away for 20 seconds. This helps relieve symptoms like spasms, headaches, and eye twitching, and it also encourages regular blinking to lubricate the eyes and improve your ocular comfort. You also want to model the desired behavior so kids take their cues from the adults in their lives. So try to cut back from your own screen time and frame it as a positive of change, not a punishment. The American Academy of Pediatrics even has template screen time contracts. 
However, some screen time is good. Many educational platforms are useful, for example, and interactive games allow students to connect with their friends in the absence of real life socializing. As in most things in life, moderation is the key. Okay, we spent a lot of time on digital eye strain, but let's talk about question number two. If I have 20-20 vision, do I still need an eye exam? I actually hear this question a lot. If I have 20-20 vision, why would I need to see you? Well, there are so th many things medically that could go wrong with your eyes that you would never notice or see or even feel. For example, glaucoma is known as a very silent disease. It can sneak up on you because a person's vision is not always affected until very late stage in the disease. And only an eye exam can detect glaucoma. We need to check your pressure and look at your nerves. It's also important because during an eye exam, there are other things involved that are not directly related to vision clarity. So I'm not just checking your prescription, I'm looking for signs of diabetes, hypertension, and more. So yes, even if your vision is great, you should get an eye exam at least every few years. Question number three is, why does my eye twitch when I get stressed out? And so eye twitching is actually really, really common when you do get stressed out. Eye twitches are common if you have a lack of sleep, too much caffeine, or are really stressed. The eyes do have thin muscles around them, and so it just seems to be where people notice it the most. So if you're squinting a lot, like straining really hard to see on the computer, not getting enough sleep, too much stress, too much screen, time, eye twitches are pretty normal. How do you get an eye twitch to stop? Um, usually you can't, except you just have to get more sleep and be less stressed and try to reduce your screen time a little bit. And usually they'll go away when you stop thinking about them. Question number four, are drugstore cheaters or readers better or worse than what the eye doctor sells? So typically with over-the-counter readers, they will do the job as far as clarity, but keep in mind that they'll not be specifically made for you. If you already wear corrective lenses, drugstore readers cannot probably comfortably accommodate all of the needs of your current vision. But when I say they're not made for you, those glasses, over-the-counter readers, are just made, you know, with sort of median measurements, like normal measurements. So it's not taking into account if your right eye is a little bit further, like there's a di further distance from your nose to your eye on your right side versus your left. So little asymmetries in even your anatomy are not accounted for, let alone asymmetries in your prescription. So if you have a lot of eye strain, if you do a lot of up close work, typically prescription readers will be more comfortable in general. That's not saying that you can't get by with over-the-counter readers because they will magnify and they will help as well, but there are definitely pros and cons. Question number five, during the pandemic, I bought everything online. Should I buy my glasses online? I'm in the market for a new pair of glasses. Is it really a big deal if I buy them online? Well. Ordering glasses online is definitely an option. There are some great quality frames and lenses out there, but do not count out your local eye doctor. Buying glasses online basically makes you are saying, I'm the optician. I'm going to do my own measurements. I'm going to choose my own lenses. I'm gonna choose my own treatments on the lenses. And there is a wealth of knowledge in the optical space where we can, as eye care providers as people who work with prescriptions all the time, we can make sure your frames and lenses have the appropriate fit and customization for you. There's actually a massive difference between visual clarity, fit of the frames, long term how happy you are in glasses, we can do a much better job than online. I know that may be controversial to say, and yes, I do own my own practice where I sell frames and lenses, but the reality is I can do a much better job because I know if you're a minus four or a minus 10, I know exactly how to fit those lenses to optimize not only your vision, but your comfort. And when you go it alone and act as your own optician, you don't necessarily have that same background and training and ability to get yourself in the best glasses for you. So ultimately do what you feel is right. You're never gonna see me backing an online glasses brand because I truly believe in personalization, customization, and the professionalism that opticians, optometrists, ophthalmologists bring to the glasses fitting process. Question number six, how long can I really wear my disposable contact lenses? So the answer is only as long as recommended by the manufacturer. I see this all the time, patients trying to extend their daily lenses or extend their two week lenses. If it's a daily lens, wear it for one day. If it's a monthly lens, you should wear it 
one month and no more. If you do not follow the directions with this, you may not have problems right away. But if you continue to do it, you will eventually have a problem that you could have prevented by wearing your contacts correctly. I liken this to changing the oil in your car, right? So you're supposed to do it every so many thousand miles and you technically can go over, you can push it. But when that goes bad, when you finally have pushed it too far, the whole engine shuts down. And it's really like that with eye care as well. I see lots of patients in their 30s or 40s and they say to me like, I've been wearing lenses like this since I was in my teens. It's fine, my eyes are fine. And what tends to happen is at some point, your eyes just sort of say enough and you either end up with GPC or infiltrates or ulcer and the cornea of your eye. And it is very, very damaging and it can take you out of contact lenses permanently. It can even blind you to have some of these infections occur. So it is not a good idea to overwear your contacts at all. That's actually like my first commandment, thou shalt not overwear thy contact lenses. All right, question seven, can sitting too close to the TV hurt your eyes? So no, when TVs were first developed, they did emit low levels of radiation and with excessive amounts of exposure could theoretically cause vision problems, but radiation is no longer an issue with modern TVs. So mom is not right on this in terms of how far you sit from the TV. Now watching tons of TV may not be the most productive use of your time, but it's not gonna really hurt your vision. Question number eight, can sunlight give you cataracts? Yes, prolonged exposure to the sun's UV rays can increase your likelihood of developing cataracts. For that reason, the American Academy of Ophthalmology recommends wearing UV blocking sunglasses and hats every time you spend time outdoors, and I recommend it as well. Question number nine, do carrots really improve your eyesight? So everybody thinks carrots are what to eat for eyesight. And the answer to this is sort of. Carrots have a lot of beta carotene, which your body uses to make vitamin A, which can help promote good eyesight. But the goal should be to have a balanced diet overall. And in reality, leafy greens like spinach and collard green and kale, probably does more overall for your eyes than carrots themselves. And finally, our last question, number 10, do you need to get your eyes checked more frequently as you age? The answer to this is yes. Not only does your vision start to decline as you age, your risk increases for things like cataracts and glaucoma but yearly comprehensive eye exams are recommended for all adults regardless of age. Well, we made it, and you've had your top 10 questions about eye care answered. Make sure to let me know in the comments below if we missed your question. That's it for today's lesson. Class is dismissed. I'll see you next time.